Welcome to the launch party for Elizabeth Warren's Big Bold Plans, written by Lori Thompson, illustrated by Susanna Chapman. We are so glad that you all can be here with us today. Um, I will share just a couple of sort of housekeeping items with you. Your cameras and your microphones, I am afraid, are muted for the security of everyone. Given the topic of the book, we wanted to be extra careful mm -hmm. and make sure we had a safe and fun virtual launch. And uh, just so that you know, we are recording this video in the hopes that maybe it will be up on the author and illustrator's webpage afterwards if they like. And finally, if you didn't see this message in the waiting room, if you have a chance to run and get a blank sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper towards the end of the launch party, we will be having an activity that Susanna will sort of lead us through that you might want to participate in. If you have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, it might be a little easier. So that's something that you could do right now as we're just getting started and letting everyone into the chat room. We also do have some questions for the author and illustrator that many of you provided when you registered. Thank you for those. We may not be able to get through all of them, but we'll get through as many of them as we can. And at this point, I'm gonna turn things over to Lori and Susanna so that they can talk about their exciting new book. Awesome, thank you so much, Johnny. Hello, everybody. Hey, so good to see you. Um, Susanna and I put together some slides so you can see some pictures. So let me just try to get that to share so everyone can see it. Okay, so I hope you're all seeing the slides now. Um, this is me when I was very little and um, my, my grandmother used to tell me that I started to read when I was two. I think that's uh, probably not quite true. Um, I think grandmas have a way of bragging about things like that, but um, I do not remember learning how to read. I've been reading for as long um, as my memory goes back. Uh, I love to read and I love to look at pictures. Um, I was a computer programmer for a while, a software engineer, but I feel like um, I really come home and really found my purpose in the world, going back to children's books. This is my family, um, my husband Bernie, and uh, my two kids. We went on this awesome trip to Alaska to see the glaciers this uh, last summer. Um, so that was pretty exciting. And I don't know if you can see my pet pile there, but I have three uh, animals who are all snuggled up there together. I have um, a black cat, a calic, uh, um, tabby cat, and a little tiny dog. And yeah, they sleep like that most of the time. They're pretty good buddies. They're good writing companions too. And these are my books. Uh, I have mostly nonfiction, a little bit of a, a eclectic collection, something for all ages here, um, with the newest one, of course, Elizabeth Warren's Big Bold Plants. And Susanna. Hello. I shared a picture of, um, similar to Lori of my early passion of um, drawing I also did enjoy drawing from, from a young age and like Lori, uh, I've been reminded of that by my relatives. <laughs> so, um, always been a favorite thing of mine to do. You can go to the next one if you want. Okay. And then um, the, um, I have loved working on books for a while for my whole adult life, um, but up up until very recently, I've worked as a book designer. And so I included on, on here some interiors I worked on and a lift the flap book that I designed. Um, and I also love to do murals. Uh, my first illustrated book that I worked on was I, I did as I, when I was still a book designer, which was The Girl Who Ran, another story about a strong woman, um, Bobby Gibb, who was the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. And then Elizabeth Warren's Big Bold Plans was my, my next book that I worked on, and I'm so grateful I got to be paired with Lori to tell this story. 
I am grateful as well. I think the artwork is just phenomenal. It makes oh, thanks, fun. Lori. The words are phenomenal. <laughs> it was an awesome team to be a part of, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and Susanna made this amazing video to introduce you to the book. Hopefully I can get it to play and hopefully you'll be able to hear the sound. Let's give it a try. Meet Lori the author. Hello. And I'm Susanna the illustrator. We worked on this book socially distanced from the start with Lori in Seattle, me in Nashville, our Athenaeum experts, Julia, Michael, Claire, and Jeannie in New York, all the while focused on Elizabeth Warren, born in Norman, Oklahoma in 1949. That's where the book begins with a nod to her family store, Herring Hardware. The title page shows Brant Park, also in Norman. There's a young Elizabeth teaching tricks to Missy, her puppy. But let's go back to the beginning to Lori for a look into writing the book. First, I started my research. I read lots of books, newspapers, and magazines, and also watched lots of interviews on video. I use a different notebook for every project that I work on. This one seemed like the perfect fit for this book. While I'm researching, I write down facts, ideas, and themes in my notebook. Once themes start to emerge, I make word banks, lists of related words that I want to have on hand when I start drafting. Because this book was on a tight schedule, I began working on sketches while Lori was still writing. I spent a lot of visual research looking at photos and, like Lori, videos of Senator Warren. I sketched lots of notable scenes from her early life that I read about. Not everything was ultimately used in the book, but it was all good practice. I also made watercolor character sketches since I planned to do the final art in watercolor. Once I have a fairly decent draft, I ask my critique group for feedback so that I can start revising. Then the manuscript went on to Julia at Athenaeum, whose editorial suggestions helped me make it even better. And finally, on to Claire and Jeannie, whose copy edits helped to make it perfect. The first draft I received of Lori's manuscript introduced young Elizabeth Warren looking at her reflection. Working back and forth with Michael, the book's excellent art director, I first tried some sketches depicting that scene. Lori's next draft didn't specify a location, but it did focus on Elizabeth Warren's early knack for teaching. We realized that the ideal setting to introduce a young Elizabeth Warren would be in her classroom. Next, we realized it would be best to focus on just Elizabeth and save her other classmates for later. After that, her daydreaming seemed a little off. She helped others learn from such an early age. Adding some context, some little lessons about Oklahoma, and we were off to the races, sharing Elizabeth Warren's story. Here is a look at the final text and illustration of those first two pages. As a child, Elizabeth Warren never dreamed she would one day run for president of the United States. She had a different big, bold plan. She would be a teacher. And from there, we'll jump forward to the very last page. Elizabeth Warren has been making plans her entire life. As a child, she never dreamed she would one day become a United States senator or run for president. Still, her persistence and empathy led her there, one big, bold plan at a time. We worked on this book with a lot of distance between us, and now all that work is in one spot. You can have it and read all the pages about Senator Warren that we didn't show by pre-ordering the book right now. that so much. Thank you, Susanna. <laughs> um, so since you saw the first page and the last page, but we don't want to give the whole book away, uh, we thought that we would each share our favorite spread um, from the interior of the book so you can get a little bit more of a feel for what's there. So the, the one that I am sharing is when young Elizabeth is beginning high school um, so I'll begin by reading the text and then I'll tell you a little bit of why, why it's my favorite spread. Not long afterward, and to find out what it's after you'll have to get the book, <laughs> Elizabeth started high school. She had skipped sixth grade, so she was younger than the other kids. And those kids lived in big houses and wore fancy clothes while her family was barely scraping by. How could she possibly fit in? Elizabeth refused to let her worries get the best of her. She joined as many clubs and activities as possible and soon found herself exactly where she belonged, 
on the debate team. So I just like this part of the story because uh, starting things and feeling like we can't fit in is something that I think is a very relatable part of anyone's story. And I like to draw lots of people in, in large groups. So I enjoyed the chance to do that. And one fun fact about this page that um, speaks to the amount of research that went into this book is um, initially I, when I had looked at lots of photos from Elizabeth Warren's growing up time, all those photos were in black and white. And so I didn't know what the school colors were of her school. Um, and so I at first had them in like forest green because I like forest green. But then the legal team looked into it and found out that it was actually purple. And so then at pretty much the last minute, we changed like the, um, the cheerleaders and the pep team and the flag to purple, just to, to make sure that absolutely everything is accurate to this woman's story. I love that attention to detail. And, <laughs> and I also love that I didn't even know that until um, we, were, we were putting this together. So that's just so fun. <laughs> uh, and my favorite spread, if I can get it to advance. Yeah. Um, so this is my favorite spread. I'll go ahead and read it to you um, and then talk about why it's my favorite. It was a big dream, but Elizabeth fought hard and she won. As the first woman senator for Massachusetts, she kept listening to people's stories. She kept working to fix rules that were unfair. She kept helping people in need. She was a mother, a teacher, a lawyer, and a United States senator. She had done more than she'd ever dreamed, but it was no longer just about her. And there's a couple of reasons why this is my favorite spread in the whole book. Um, one is I just, I love uh, Susanna's illustration of Elizabeth on the left-hand side and just how um, fierce and amazing she looks there and, and also um, joyful and confident and, um, I just, I absolutely adore that image. Um, but also something that I really wanted to include in the text was how at, when Elizabeth would do the selfie lines at her campaign rallies, she would always do the pinky swears um, with the little girls. And, and it was all about, that's what girls do. Girls run for office because girls can be leaders. And she's really all about inspiring young girls to um, follow their dreams and take charge. And uh, I couldn't work that into the text. It didn't fit into the narrative that I was telling. Um, but I just love that Susanna was able to work it into the artwork um, and how Elizabeth is right, right down there on that girl's level, the way she really did it. Um, and the other reason why this is my favorite spread is just the, the diversity that Susanna really captured here. Um, we've got people from all walks of life um, and people from, you know, across ages, across religions, across um, ethnicities. Um, and I, I really just love that uh, that's captured here um, and captured so beautifully too. So, oops, not yet. Um, mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna stop sharing and go back to us. And Susanna and I, um, What's really interesting now that we're doing this together is we had never met. Um, we still have never met other than like this way. <laughs> um, so we don't really know each other. And so we thought this would be a good time for us to get to know each other a little better as well. Um, so we are going to play Two Truths and a Lie. <laughs> are you ready, Susanna? Yes, I am. OK, so here are my Two Truths and a Lie. OK. Like Elizabeth Warren, I have lived in Massachusetts. Like Elizabeth Warren, I also had a dog named Missy when I was younger. And I wasn't on the debate team like Elizabeth Warren when I was in high school, but I was on the forensics team. Which one of those is a lie? Well, I would guess that you were on the forensics team because that takes a lot of attention to detail and that just fits with what I know about you. Um, I know you live in Seattle now, so that if 
if you used to live in Massachusetts, that's a very big move. Um, and I know you have cats now, right? That your photo was of cats. Is that true? Two cats and a dog. So is she on both teams, cat mm -hmm. and dog? Yep. I, <laughs> I, not only that, but a dog being Missy, what are the odds? I'm going to guess that you did not have a dog named Missy. That sounds, that sounds hard, hard to believe. <laughs> you are correct. I did not oh, have wow. a dog named Missy. But you did um, live in Massachusetts. I did live in Massachusetts and had a number of dogs when I was little, oh. uh, but none of them were named Missy. Oh, okay. okay, your turn. Uh, so uh, my two truths in a lie for you are first, that like Elizabeth Warren, I have lived in Oklahoma. Uh, like Elizabeth Warren, I was on the debate team. And lastly, that the musical Oklahoma is very important to me. <laughs> mm, okay, very Oklahoma. Yeah, that's an Oklahoma. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, I believe that you could have lived in Oklahoma since you're in Tennessee now. That's not too dramatic. Um, let's see. I also believe it's plausible that the musical Oklahoma is very important to you. I'm going to say that the lie is that you were on the debate team. Well, I gotcha. Oh, I was, I, against all odds, I was on the debate team for one semester. <laughs> and learned a lot about agriculture policy for the first few weeks. But I've never, and Oklahoma, the musical Oklahoma is very important to me, but I've never lived there. Never lived in Oklahoma. Okay. Well, you did get me. See, I assume that, that all of us creative types are introverts and would, uh, would avoid the debate team like that. Well, like. yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't stay on it for long, it's true. But. <laughs> all right. Well, good. You got me. Nicely done. Um. So I have a few more questions for you. I was surprised to learn um, that you had done so much book design previously. Mm. Um, and so I was really curious to learn about just how you became an illustrator. What, what was your mm. career path like that led you oh, here? Oh, well, that's a nice question to ask. Um, well, I, I did in college, I majored in illustration uh, but I also took a lot of graphic design classes and I was too nervous about the idea of really going for illustration in my career when I graduated that sounded too scary and so um, but I loved books so much and I loved children's books especially and every time I go to a bookstore I always find myself in the children's section and I love to I love to look at all kinds of children's books and picture books and books for young readers. And so I knew that was a big passion of mine. And so, uh, but I always was drawing and doing murals and doing different drawing projects. And then gradually I would do like very, very small illustration projects. It was, um, I don't know if it, it, I wouldn't say it was a big, bold plan. <laughs> it was lots of tiny little, little teeny plans at a time of, <laughs> of here's something I can do and all, all the while um, working um, at a book design company. And then I just had done enough and had put them on a Tumblr, put illustrations on a Tumblr. And then eventually um, a woman who I had known in college who then worked at Compendium, a, a publishing company. Is that in Seattle? I can't remember. I don't think so. Oh, it's in somewhere West Coast. <laughs> and, um, and she had liked a style I had done for another project. Um, and one that I never would have imagined would be a stepping stone to doing a book. Um, but I then uh, kind of like auditioned to do 
in this um, book, the book about Bobby Gibb. And so I, I and, and someone else had, had drawn different versions of, of Bobby Gibb. And then ultimately I got, I got to do it. So that was my first, my first um, project. That was a, a real illustration project for a book. And awesome. that was just four years, three or four years ago. I saw that book um, when it came out and the art literally took my breath away. Oh. Um, and so when they said you were going to illustrate this, I went crazy. No um, <laughs> crazy no uh, because I, I, I love your work and I think it's just, it's perfect for Elizabeth. <laughs> oh man, that means so, so much. Yeah. Dream team. <laughs> <laughs> wow so awesome you. it was a dream to work with with you on it thank you yeah and um it's funny i my past is similar and yet completely different yeah, um because yeah. i started out as a computer programmer a software engineer um but you know i'd always loved children's books um and uh, just didn't think it was a very practical way to make a living. So I went mm -hmm. into um, software engineering instead. And then I had my own kids. Um, and while I was reading to them every day, uh, it just really sparked that joy once again um, in me. And um, I just knew that that's what I wanted to try doing. Um, and I had taken some time off from full-time working to raise kids. And so I had a little bit of time um, a little bit of time when you're a stay-at-home mom, but <laughs> a little bit of time um, to see if I could make a career switch and, and make it happen. And um, took a lot of hard work and a lot of persistence. Nevertheless, she persisted. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I made it, and here I am. And yeah, I, I, people ask me if I miss it. Nope, not a bit. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy where I'm at. <laughs> And which was the first book project that you worked on? Um, I actually worked on my YA, Be a Change Maker, and um, my other picture book biography, Emmanuel's Dream, at the same time. They, they both oh, came wow. out of, funny enough, even though one is a picture book and one is a YA, uh, they came out of the same project um, that oh. kind of morphed its way into two separate things as it went along. Um, yeah, so uh, that's really interesting how they both kind of evolved simultaneously, and they and they both came out like within four months of each other, uh, in the end too. So, um, wow, I had no, that was idea. Pretty cool. I had no idea that they were at the same time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when, you, when you like notice things of someone else's life, they always look so like beautifully one chapter at a time. <laughs> you never realize, wow, she was really doing a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was kind of messy behind the scenes. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah, wow. and and I actually I, I started really seriously trying to do books for kids. I'd done magazines and small pieces, um, but I really started to focus on doing books in two thousand five, and um, Be a Change Maker was my first published book, and it came out in two thousand fourteen. So it was nine years um, mm, wow. before I had one. So yeah, it looked like I was kind of an overnight success because they all came really close together, but there's a long time building up to that. Wow, that's really cool to know. <sighs> okay, I also have another question for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, and then, can I ask you a question after that? I want, sure. I want to the yeah, okay. yeah, okay, you, so yeah. I, sure. I don't want to monopolize. The oh, question. sure. No, you're um, great. But because this book was on such a tight timeline and we were kind of working simultaneously and you were doing sketches based off of early drafts um which then changed and your sketches were no longer needed um, it was heartbreaking for me to see yeah. these sketches that i loved get cut um when the words got cut um so i wanted to ask you how annoying was that really oh, um right. and was that the hardest part of working on this project or was it something else? Oh. What, was, what was the hardest part of it for you? Um, well, uh, I think I knew 
I was taking a risk of working on sketch. Like I could have waited until there was a super final manuscript. So that was a risk I took knowingly <laughs> that things might change. And I, um, um, so I was never annoyed at you. <laughs> I don't think I was annoyed at anybody. I think it's, it is, it is challenging to like work on something a lot and then put it aside, but that's so much of the creative process. I know that for you, you did that too. With like, I, like there were probably lots of paragraphs that were like your babies that to you conjured up a whole world. And then sometimes you just have to let those go. <laughs> and surprisingly for me, I, that always seems to lead to better, more honest work even to, to have to do so much pruning that it's not it's not pleasant but it's um it's it's a part of a a great process in the end uh i'd say the hardest part it was that it was a quick it was a very quick um book so that was i i wouldn't say that was annoying it was challenging <laughs> yeah but it was a great team truly it was the best project i've ever worked on and it was always an encouraging team every time every time that I got feedback from Michael or from Julia it was always um deeply encouraging and um helpful completely and even that we we changed so much as we went but it never it was never painful in the way that some projects can be <laughs> yeah yeah I totally agree isn't that, <laughs> isn't that interesting that yeah I mean, we had all of these confines and challenges, and yet I I agree it ended up being one of the most fun things I've ever worked on. <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah, it was really oh. collaborative, and and um, books don't always work that way, so it was really yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, okay, a question for you, Lori. Were were there any? Um, what was the surprising part of this book making? writing process for you? Yeah. Um, well, I was surprised I could actually get something out as quickly as I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and that it wasn't just awful. Um, but I think the most surprising thing for me was um, in researching Elizabeth Warren and kind of her life and her path, I was surprised how it kind of seemed at every turn she was pushed into politics um, mm -hmm. or drug into politics rather than it being really her plan. You know, um, she always had plans to help people and to serve and to make the world a better place, but she didn't necessarily ever plan to do that through politics. And, and I was surprised that somebody could get to her position without being really power hungry and really driven and and I didn't feel like she was I felt like she kind of always just went into it for some other purpose you know to serve and to help and to take care of people um, and that really surprised me that that she never dreamed of being a politician that that wasn't anywhere in her her life plan or her goals for herself here's a related question Lori yeah. Um, and, and also for Susanna, the, a number of people asked when they registered, which is, what was something that you learned about Elizabeth during your research, including Susanna, I assume the research that you needed to do for visual purposes, that um, either was the most surprising thing or your favorite thing that did not make it into the book? Oh, that didn't make it into the book. Ooh. <laughs> Well, I have one scene that I loved that I couldn't put into the book. Um, and I think it, if I remember right, it was when she was 10 years old. Um, she went over to a friend's house and saw that they had wallpaper hanging in their bathroom. And she thought that was the coolest thing ever. And um, she wanted wallpaper. So she saved her money um, and she made babysitting and things. And she went to Sears and ordered wallpaper and, you know, brought it all home. And her dad is just like, you don't know how to hang wallpaper. How are you going to hang wallpaper? We've never done that before. Um, 
and her answer was, other people have hung wallpaper. How hard could it be? <laughs> and I just loved that, 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 you know, she had never done it before. She was 10 years old, but, but she was just ready to tackle it herself because why not? Other people do it. How hard could it be? Um, I, I just loved her, um, her courage uh, to try things and what's the worst thing that could happen, right? Um, so I thought that was a really fun story, but okay, it, it didn't really fit the narrative. <laughs> and I remember that being in an early draft and I yeah. didn't, it does, it is a great image. It was too bad we had to cut that. Yeah, <laughs> I would have loved to see your drawing for it. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> oh wow oh um johnny you'd ask me as well i only try to think um i think uh there was a lot that i admired about her in in researching i guess same as you laurie it was like earlier stories about her life that i hadn't known like that after her father had had a heart attack that she at a very young age was doing um working as a waitress and um to help to help out and um and also i was she sewing clothes was that yeah like, yeah, yeah. She was sewing clothes. But i think i i to me that was i that was a you know i guess just moving to know that she really wanted to help her family um right yeah at at 13 i think yeah yeah, yeah. I also loved that um, she had broken her nose twice by the time she was eight. I think. What? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that. She was pretty rough and tumble. I mean, she had three older brothers, so she was yeah. kind of a tomboy. Um, wow. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yikes. <laughs> Another question that we got more than once was were you able to meet or talk with Elizabeth Warren in the process of your research? And if not, where did you focus your research efforts? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go first there. Um, so, no, uh, she had put out pretty much a blanket statement. You know, it was the middle of the campaign. Um, she was also a working senator. Uh, she had pretty much put out a blanket statement that no, I'm not going to do this type of interview. Uh, so I knew that she wasn't going to be a primary resource uh, directly. Now, she has written a lot of books. She has given a lot of interviews. Um, and so that is where I turned for research. I, I read, you know, the books that she has written. I read biographies written about her. Um, and then I just watched every interview that she's ever given so that I could really hear and absorb her voice and her mannerisms and her approach to things. Um, so I didn't get to talk to her directly, but I, I felt like I did in a way, um, just because she's out there um, so much. Um, and I'll let our other little nugget, I'll give that one to you, Susanna. Oh, that's a <laughs> nugget to give me. <laughs> <laughs> and it affects you more than me. So, <laughs> oh, well, so in doing in in doing this research, pretty much I could find photos of lots of the of the scenes, which is a is an interesting thing about working on a book about a a real life person versus a fictional person. Is you kind of want to get things right. True, even the outfit. There's an outfit of her um in her debate team as a kid and the outfit I have her in is in a well-documented time that she won a, I don't know what it was if she won state or something I can't remember but she's wearing an outfit that's true to life um, but the one thing that I couldn't find photo evidence of or was what her childhood dog looked like and, and no description anywhere and that to me is an important factual detail because there's so many kinds of dogs and I'm familiar with her dog Bailey now who's a golden retriever but I didn't know if that if and I wanted to get it right and so I asked Julia and Michael if they knew because you and I weren't even in, weren't in touch that's a, a thing that happens with working on picture books is they 
prefer to keep illustrator and author apart so that no one is influenced either way. <laughs> um, so then I think like, oh, a few weeks later, some, I'd asked the question if they knew, and then we got an email from her that was a very detailed description of um, her dog, Missy, and it was a Pekingese, and it had an underbite, and <laughs> all kinds of important details about Missy, and it felt really good to know that this is, a, this is true. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And that, I mean, I was blown away that in the midst of her campaign and how busy yeah. she was, she took the time to email us all of those details. She even included an iStock photo, didn't she? <laughs> an, an image. Yeah. And like, it's almost oh, like yeah. this, but not quite. It's, <laughs> yeah. it was so cute. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was, yeah, it felt very personal and, you know, like you could, t like in the description, with like the weight of the dog and the the hair color and yeah yeah um <laughs> it, it was really fun i think she enjoyed being able to go back to her 12 year old self in the midst of all the chaos yeah, that she was dealing yeah, with what could be better revisiting <laughs> your childhood dog <laughs> right yeah. yeah yeah that was super fun <laughs> uh johnny are there any more you think that uh we should hit before we move on? I think there definitely are, but mm -hmm. one that uh, probably would be important is what are each of your big bold plans moving forward? What, what next project are you working on now? Or are you anticipating um, bringing to fruition soon? Uh, Suzanne, you wanna jump in? Ooh, sure. Well. Um, I'm still very new in my life of being a full-time illustrator, actually. So my, one of my big, bold plans is to be able to keep doing this kind of work. Um, and right now I'm work, I am working on a picture book, uh, that's a very different kind of story. Um, but it's about, it is a fictional book. Oh, no, it's, a, it's kind of like a combination of fiction and nonfiction that's about um, galaxies and also the story of a, a little girl and her grandparents. And so my big bold plan is to be able to finish that. <laughs> um, but it's called Ada and the Galaxies and it'll be coming out in, if all goes according to plan, it'll be coming out in summer of 21. So that's quite a while away, but that makes it feel even bigger and bolder that, <laughs> that it's in the distance. Um, and another big bold plan is I'm I'm growing some vegetables. <laughs> I have to water them. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all doing some new things that we haven't necessarily done before right now. True, yeah. <laughs> um so my big bold plan is I am hard at work revising a manuscript. Um I call it my hopeful and heartwarming manuscript about 9-11. <laughs> oh, wow. um, believe it or not, there are some hopeful and heartwarming 9-11 stories out there. Um, and I'm hoping to share one that uh, really resonated with me and, and grabbed onto my heartstrings. So, um, oh, wow. yeah, working hard on that. It's a picture book. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, and let's see, outside of writing, do I have any big, bold plans? Um, I guess just get through this uh, quarantine, stay at home mm -hmm. business. Um, I am really fortunate to have my whole family at home with me here, um, <laughs> which is great because we like each other and we all get along and that's lots of fun. It does make it a little bit harder to write when there's all these people in the house all the time. Um, my kids are both teenagers. Um, one's in college, one's in high school. So um, just trying to find some kind of rhythm where we can all do what we need to do, um, still come together for some nice family time and, and self-care time as well. So yeah, those are my big yeah. bold plans. Um, and I guess with that, we can move into 
our activity. Is everybody ready with your sheets of paper? Yeah, activity time. All right, I'm going to go back to sharing. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. I'm not going to share the screen yet because we need to see Susanna. Okay. Our activity is to help you make your own big, bold plans. And Susanna's going to show you what to do with that piece of paper. So you have your piece of paper. And you, uh, we had said the prompt is at eight and a half by 11, but you can really use whatever size you have. And what we're making here is, a, is your own book to put your own big bold plans. And the first step is to fold it in half this way, and then to fold it in half this way. So then you have four pieces and then to fold it um, and so that this part is into quarters. So in the end, you'll have something. If you can see the creases, there's eight. The, the piece of paper is divided into eight. Then the last step that you will do before you fold it into an actual book is fold it in half again this way, which they I think I've heard you refer to as um, hamburger style. So if this is a hot dog, this the narrow way, it's the this way. And then you can either rip, or if you have some scissors handy, cut that middle piece, the one fold that doesn't touch any edges, just like that. Then you're, what you'll do next is holding these sides, fold back, fold back these, and you will interestingly have a book. Here's my book now. Susanna, can you demonstrate that folding part one more time? Oh, so yes. Everybody gets it? Of course. I will demonstrate. So we had this. This is what we look, what it looks like. It looks like it could be a bird mask. And then what you'll do is fold it like this and then a fun little maneuver that collapses the book so that there are pages like that. <laughs> a miniature book with just one cut. Great. All right, cool. Now I'm going to share the screen and tell you all what to do with that book. We didn't tell you to have a pen handy, but hopefully you have something to write with nearby. And I will now. There we go. Okay, so you've got your book. Um, the first page, the front cover, you're going to give it a title. What is your big, bold plan? Um, it could be related to our current situation. It could be related to work or personal life or uh, any facet of your life that you would like to improve. So think about what you want your big, bold plan to be and write it down or draw a picture or both on your front cover. And I'm gonna go through this a little bit quickly because I don't wanna make y'all wait too long. Um, so once you've got your cover, open it up to the first page and uh, the first inside page. So it's actually pages two and three. And then um, just brainstorm some ideas about your big bold plan. What is it? Uh, what's it involve? Think about or draw some pictures. Um, whatever ideas, maybe make a, a mind map, make some bubbles, things coming out of it, uh, just to help yourself gather some ideas about your big bold plan. And then turn the page. So you're actually on page four now. Um, and take that one side, the left hand side, and write your why. I always find when I'm writing, uh, one of the most important things for me to be able to write that project is to know what's my why. Why does it matter to me? 
Um, and I wrote about that in my book, Be a Changemaker, too, that uh, that's one of the things that keeps us going is to really understand why did we come up with this idea in the fir first place and why is it important to us? Why does it matter? So um, think about what's your why? why? Why did this idea pop into your head as your big, bold plan? And then on the next page, uh, start breaking it down into steps. How are you going to go about making this big, bold plan happen? Um, what, what will you need to do? You know, when we look at a big, bold plan, it's overwhelming, it's daunting. And so we've got to chunk it. We've got to break it down into pieces that seem a little bit more manageable, a little bit more doable, and then figure out what order we need to do them in. So just start coming up with steps. Um, what might you need to do to make this happen? And turn the page and think about what might get in your way. Um, what obstacles or challenges might you encounter? What might try to stop you? Um, this could be rules that you come up against. It might be people that have a different opinion than you. Um, it could just be a situation um, that you have to change. Um, and of course, we know that Elizabeth Warren is running into these things all the time um, and figuring out how to, how to work with those. And um, sometimes you can't just bulldoze through them. Sometimes you have to really figure out how to negotiate and strategize and compromise uh, in a way that you can still continue to move forward. Turn the page, and I personally think this is one of the most important ones, and it's one that a lot of us tend to skip uh, because asking for help might make us uncomfortable uh, or we might view it as a sign of weakness. But I really think the most important question to ask whenever you're embarking on any big, bold plan is who can help me? Um, who can you find to be a mentor? Uh, who might be able to remove some of those obstacles for you or help you deal with some of those challenges? Um, who's kind of gone ahead of you and done something like this similar uh, before that you can lean on. So I think it's always a really good idea to identify those people who can help you. And maybe it's just a, a cheerleading team. Maybe it's just your squad who's got your back and can keep you going. Maybe it is somebody who's more of a mentor who has some, some real experience that they're willing to share with you. Uh, all of these kinds of people are important to have in your network. So. So kind of just brainstorm and, and, you know, don't leave anybody out. Uh, be willing to ask for help. And then finally, the very back page, the back cover. Um, think about what's one thing that you can do today to make this big, bold plan start to happen. And even if it's a big, bold plan, uh, your thing that you can do today might be really, really teeny. Um, you know, for planting some vegetables, maybe it's just going on the website, burpee.com or whatever, and um, looking at the different seeds and seeing uh, what it is that you might want to plant. Um, maybe it's, you know, figuring out uh, in these strange times where you can even go get potting soil, you know. Uh, what's one small thing that you can do today that will um, help you move forward? If you take one teeny tiny step every day, um, you're still making progress. And that's ultimately how big, bold plans happen. Uh, they happen with teeny tiny steps. So um, that's what we want you to do is once you've identified that one thing that you can do today to make your big, bold plan happen, go forth and start doing it. Um, see if you can get it done. All righty. Um, so that is our activity. I Hope you at least have some ideas for what you're going to put in your book if you didn't actually uh, write in it right now, but hopefully you can remember that. Um, maybe you can take a screenshot or something if you want to keep it for later. Wow, that was some serious thunder. Anyway, <laughs> before I lose my connection, <laughs> um, I think we will go to the next slide. Aha, giveaway time. We are gonna give away three books to people who are present today. Um, 
what we'll do is um, we have the participants numbered. We're going to pick three random numbers. And if your number is one of the ones that's called, we'll email you to get uh, the address where you'd like your book shipped. So Johnny. Um, Let me clarify, Lori, do they have to be on the call? We've had a few folks who have dropped off already. Do you want them to be given away to folks who are still here with us? Ooh. Yeah, let's reward the people who stuck with us for the <laughs> okay. whole time. Okay. <laughs> that seems fair to me. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Yes, tell us who our three lucky winners are. Okay, we did some random number generating. Let me just compare the numbers with the folks on our list. And our first winner is still here. That would be Martha Morse. Oh. Martha, we do have your email heart. address from the registration. So we'll email you afterward to get a shipping address so that we can send a book to you. And thanks for coming, Martha. I know Martha. Yay! <laughs> Let's see. Winner number two. Winner number two is also still with us. That would be Erin Ostrander. Erin's a local girl. We know her. Yay, Erin. Oh, Thanks for joining Aaron. today, Erin. Thanks for sticking with us. Yeah, thank you. I feel like, I feel like Oprah, you win a book and you win a yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> winner number three. Ah, winner number three. Oh, winner number three is not still with us. She missed her chance. <laughs> don't means... don't tell us who it was. I'm not. We don't want to. We don't want to make anyone feel bad after the fact. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Winner number three, in fact, then is she still here? Mary Boone, who is a local as well. Hey. Thanks for coming, Mary. You win a Thank book. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So we will email you guys for your shipping addresses um, and get those out to you. All right. And lastly, if I can get, there we go. Um, this little handy dandy URL uh, is to my local independent bookstore, Secret Garden Bookshop. Um, you can just go to tinyurl.com. Y76RUDDT. Um, and that will take you right to the link to buy the book and it'll ship directly from their warehouse to anywhere in the country. So um, feel free to use that link to uh, purchase or you can, you can purchase from anywhere else you feel like as well. It's a beautiful book. We have Mother's Day coming up. There might even be some moms who would be interested in this book, especially if they have someone young they would like to read it to and inspire. So get them while they're hot. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, Johnny. Thanks for that awesome plug. Yeah. All right. So there we are, everyone. Uh, this concludes our online virtual book launch party for Elizabeth Warren's Big Bold Plans. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all for coming. Thank you everyone and, and thank you Lori for uh, writing this wonderful book. <laughs> thank you Thanks Susanna. Time. It was so okay. much fun to collaborate on this with you. Oh yeah, agreed. And fun to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, this has been great. And thank you, Johnny, yeah, for being our, you, Johnny. our capable technology hostess. You're more than welcome. And <laughs> everyone have a good rest of the week. And as we face the challenges we're in, remember to, like Elizabeth, persist. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great bye -bye. week. Bye. Bye.